Hello lovers, in this video Tim is going to be talking about the behavioural approach to phobias for your A-level psychology. Now make notes from this video and pay attention to all the case studies and the dates and who did what when. But to help you remember all of those bits over my website there are loads of multiple choice questions just waiting for you. model is one way in which psychologists look at disorders and abnormalities. The behavioral model of abnormality states that behaviors and abnormalities are learned. They're not inherent from our birth or present as a small infant, and they must be picked up and learned through our experiences as we grow and develop through childhood and into adulthood. When we apply this model specifically to phobias, it suggests that the behaviors associated with those phobias, like anxiety, stress, or irrational fears, are learned and picked up and therefore they can be unlearned and in unlearning them we can either manage or hopefully cure those phobias. The behavioural model states that these behaviours are learned through two types of conditioning, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Let's look at classical conditioning first. This is a natural fear reflex presented in response to a specific stimulus. Some reflex fear responses are completely natural, they're programmed into us by evolution and they protect us and they're completely logical for that reason. Examples would be fear of loud and sudden noises or of dangerous drops and heights. Being afraid of those is not irrational, it's a completely rational evolutionary survival mechanism. Over time, however, these fears can generalise and spread out to less rational stimuli such as rats and open spaces. This is then a phobia, it's not rational. Operant conditioning is slightly different. Operant conditioning is a response to our actions. We learn from the consequences of our actions. Some of these actions have a positive reinforcement. We gain pleasure either from the action itself or from its consequences. Others, most phobias, have negative reinforcement. Something we fear or hate is removed by the action or its consequences, which makes us feel better, we gain pleasure from it. Developing on this, the two-process model was first proposed by Maurer in 1947. This two-process model seeks to explain how phobias develop, but also how they're maintained and continue. People develop specific phobias through classical conditioning. A conditioned stimulus, such as a pre-existing fear of death from disease, which is entirely rational and normal, is paired with an unconditioned stimulus, such as a rat, something which isn't evolutionary locked in and isn't rational. When these two are combined, they produce a combined response, a CR, such as a fear of rats, despite them presenting no obvious and apparent danger. That fear is irrational and it becomes a phobia. That means that this conditioned response is now the phobia. That individual is afraid of rats and in their presence, the individual becomes anxious or irrationally afraid. Operant conditioning maintains this phobia. When this individual is in the proximity of a rat, they become anxious and afraid. Leaving the area and the rat, and therefore removing the stimulus, removes these negative emotions of fear. The fear and anxiety goes away when we remove the stimulus. Because of this negative reinforcement happens, the individual is conditioned into wanting to run away from rats. The phobia is maintained. Let's take an example of the two-process model, and we'll look at agoraphobia, something we've already seen in a previous video. An individual finds that they have a fear of crowds and open spaces, the classic symptoms of agoraphobia. This happened because their conditioned stimulus, a perfectly rational fear of abandonment or fear of being alone, which had been programmed in by evolution, has been paired with an unconditioned, less rational stimulus, crowds and open spaces filled with people. The conditioned response is therefore now fear and anxiety when outside the home. When leaving the home, they feel very afraid and anxious, classic symptoms of agoraphobia. But when they return to the home, these negative emotions go away and they feel much better. This is negative reinforcement and the phobia is maintained again and again. When we evaluate this behavioural model, there are advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the advantages. There is some research evidence that phobias are indeed caused by conditioning. A 1995 study by Barlow and Durand found that 50%, roughly half of people with a phobia of driving, had been involved in a car accident. This had led to a fear of driving as a conditioned response, an irrational phobia. Fearing a car crash is completely rational, but fearing driving isn't. Usually, for most people, most of the time, driving presents no obvious and apparent danger. It's the crash which is the danger. Behavioural 
therapies have been effective at treating phobias since they alter our learned behaviors or the learned behaviors of a patient. This suggests that the actual cause of phobias is behavioral. There are also disadvantages. The explanation of behavior for phobias isn't universal. Few people with a fear of snakes or spiders, for example, have actually had a traumatic experience with these animals. There may therefore be other non-behavioral explanations, commonly evolutionary biology, genetics, cognition or brain function, or even just random chance, which is helping to explain these phobias. Many people think that evolutionary biology goes a long way to explaining some phobias. Being afraid of spiders or snakes is a perfectly rational fear for most people in the world, as these animals do present a grave risk. There are two main types of behavioral therapy, and the first of these is called systematic desensitization. This process or therapy attempts to reverse the conditioning that's caused the phobia. As we've already looked at, because behaviors are learned, there is a possibility that they can be unlearned and that process can be reversed. The goal with systematic desensitization is to replace the fear and anxiety associated with the stimulus with relaxation and happiness, replacing the phobia, an irrational hatred, with a philia, an irrational liking. Firstly, the patient constructs a fear hierarchy. They rank their fears relating to that phobia. In the example of having a phobia of snakes, you would place holding a live snake at the top. That's the thing they're most afraid of. But just viewing a picture of a snake at the bottom, something which isn't that scary. The patient is then taught a series of relaxation techniques, like deep breathing or meditation, as ways to relax them. Following this, the patient then either imagines their phobia or is placed in a situation where they experience it. They do this starting from the bottom of that fear hierarchy and gradually work their way upwards. When placed in this situation or imagining that phobia, the patient uses the relaxation techniques that they've been taught to try and control and manage their fear. But they are encouraged to stop if they feel extremely anxious or are in any kind of distress. Because relaxation and anxiety are mutually exclusive, they can't both happen at the same time, the patient therefore feels relaxation rather than anxiety, at least eventually. The patient therefore repeats this process until all aspects of the phobia on that fear hierarchy are met with a relaxation response rather than a fear response. The second and rather simpler type of behavioral therapy for phobias is called flooding. Rather than a structured and gradual build-up to the exposure of the phobia, flooding involves exposing a patient to their full phobia immediately and all in one go. Obviously, this is done under conditions which are as controlled as possible to try and ensure the safety of the patient. If it's possible and realistic, this is done in real life, such as presenting a arachnophobic patient with a spider. If this isn't possible, then the phobia is visualized inside the mind of the patient. As we've already seen, spiders are a good example. This can be done in real life, and the individual with extreme ar arachnophobia may be placed in a room with a large spider. That is the fear stimulus. The patient then remains in this situation, this location, or just that visualization. Eventually, the initial spike of anxiety wears off, and the patient realizes that nothing bad has happened to them, assuming, of course, that nothing bad has happened to them. In theory, at least, their phobia has now gone and disappeared. The object or situation feared has been shown not to harm them. Behavioral therapy as a whole, and each type of behavioral therapy, has advantages and disadvantages. Systematic desensitization, the more complex and modern type of behavioral therapy, has been shown to be extremely effective in clinical trials. Zinbarg, leading a group of researchers in 1992, found it the most effective method of treating phobias, better than chemical methods and very definitely better than flooding. So there is evidence that systematic desensitization does work. Both systematic desensitization and flooding can work extremely quickly. Researchers found that about 90% of patients see a reduction in their level of phobia-related fear after just one session, which is usually around an hour, if that, so it does indeed work extremely quickly. Both behavioral therapy methods, that's like systematic desensitization and flooding, require no actual chemical medication. They're done using therapy. They can therefore be simple, straightforward, flexible, and cost-effective. Obviously, as we've seen with flooding, there are ethical issues. It deliberately and consciously puts patients in a state of extreme and long-lasting anxiety and stress, which may well continue after the session. However, the patients have given informed consent to the process. If patients drop out of behavioral therapy early, their phobias can actually get worse, especially if they drop out of flooding.
The dramatic nature of flooding makes this likely. It's unlikely after one stressful and traumatic episode in flooding that they'll ever return to continue that therapy. Lastly, Behavioural therapy only treats the symptoms of the phobia. In the same way that painkillers only treat the symptoms of a broken leg, they don't actually cure the leg. There's no attempt made by behavioural therapy to cure the root cause of the phobia. 